Hello YouTube, my name is Fontala and welcome to Firewatch. Um, before we get started, I do have a few things to say. I am sorry about not um, recording something the other day. Um, the reason why is because I had a bunch of uh, coding assignments that I had to get done. And believe it or not, I am getting a little sick right now. Um, I don't know what it is, whenever we go from winter to springtime, um, and it's the would it's a seasonal changing allergy that happens, but it gets kind of bad sometimes. Um, so I may or may not record Franbo today. Um, if I get some medicine in me and it clears up by the end of the day, I'll record a Franbo and I'll probably end up releasing that. But because this is the first day that Firewatch has been released, um, I really wanted to play this. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, yeah. Super excited. It's like totally mysterious. So here we go. Comsanto Campo Santo presents <clears throat> Cooperation with Panic and Corporate. I don't know who these people are, but um Boulder, Colorado, 1975. This looks beautiful so far. I mean, I haven't even gotten into the game, but like the background, the um, style of the text is awesome. You see Julia. Wonder what that um, refers to. Oh, I have to click on it. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are drinking, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. <laughs> yeah, usually people start out with, like, like at college, that whenever somebody, especially a guy's wanting to know me, they usually ask me, what's your major? You slur the word major and it smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? <laughs> Was that a burn, you ask? She says definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Aww, that's so sweet. Okay, um, so mouse one to use objects. Um, pick up my backpack. And which floor do I need to... I guess the first floor? Oh! Oh, okay. Wow, this looks amazing. Can I pick up anything else? No, not so far. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. Sorry about that. I had to uh, fix a few of my settings. Um, I want to make sure that this runs a little bit more smoothly. And... Oh, well, I can't do anything here. Oh, hey. Dirt. Um, so I suppose this is my truck. I'm not going to fool around too much, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get in. You put your backpack in the back. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Oh, that's so sweet. Julie wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. She's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Um, I'm getting the beagle. Yeah. Because I, I know that my, um, one of my cousins has a beagle, and... They're pretty loud, especially indoors, you know, if somebody's trying to break in or anything, they're very loud, so they can alert people. Um, Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. Yeah, I'd rather get the dog that she loves. 1979, you talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Oh, the kids question. Kids? They're not very smart. Or good at much. I am saying if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. Aww. That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. 
Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Aww. Aww, this is beautiful. Whoa, where am I now? Okay. Here we go. Um, morning is not recommended for inexperienced hikers who are in their country, learn to live with bears. Do not forget to check in and no fireworks. I wish I knew what I needed to do. There's nothing else here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and go forward like we are supposed to. <coughs> oh, and then it goes out. 1980, it's a Thursday night, and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Uh, I'd rather get mad than ignore. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. Oh, damn, dude! I didn't mean to tell her that. She tells you to fuck yourself and not to be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it, and it hurt her feelings. Well, I mean, if you're, like, together and you're not telling your partner when you're coming home, it's... Uh, that's shitty. That's, that's shitty. Like, you need to communicate. Communication is the number one thing. Expectation is also something that kills a relationship, so don't expect too much. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. You pose and flex like a He-Man. I'm gonna cute- I'm gonna choose this one. <laughs> Very nice. At least that's what my boyfriend would do. <laughs> oh, wow. This is beautiful. So far, so good. I love this place. Wow. Who, you guys, you know, Panic Incorporate and, um, what was it? I don't remember the other one. Anyways, you guys did a really good job. Two forks. Um, lookout tower. Eight more miles still. Space bar! Classic. Oh, wow. In 1982, during the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Oh, shucks. Bucket gets kicked. B b fuck to dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. attacker. You beat his goddamn face in is what you do. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the shops come, show up. The cops show up. Wow. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. There you go. No. 1984. Plans to have kids gets waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. 2,000 miles away? And commuting? I mean, I don't- I would never want to convince her to not take the job. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up, pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees she flies back to Boulder three times a semester. Whoa. 1985, Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave for having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. Um, you need to talk about it. You need to not forget that kind of stuff. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. What? She's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. What? What? Whoa, it's rough. 
Oh, he's got his ring on. Ah! <laughs> yes! That's perfect. <laughs> I'm so happy I got to see that. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987, Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. Oh man, that must be rough. Oh, you tell her family. They're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Oh no. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. She suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with a 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. Man, I don't know. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that to her. I don't know what that would do to her. Like, if I had... Oh, whoa, which way am I going? Like, if I had the resources, I would prefer to take care of her. I would prefer to take care of my what loved one. You know, I know it would be harder, but you'd get to see her every day. I mean, I know there's a point when you have to kind of just... I suppose accept it. Oh. oh. Hi. Hey, Mr. Stag. I think you're Stag. Oh, wow. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours. Drinking on the desk, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball is in the winter. Drinking then, too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Oh, no, no, no. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. I wouldn't do that. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice over there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night you were stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a .10 and you're taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents can't take... Oh, Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. That they can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. So she left. You take it. Oh man. It's kind of rough. I mean, that's life. I mean, I hate to say that, but it is. Shit like that happens. Just the way you deal with it and the choices that you put forth. I guess this is the job. Enter the lookout tower. Cool! Awesome! Wow! This is so much fun! So far, anyways. I know, I didn't expect that there to be so much dialogue. But, you know, that happens. Alright. Hey, I guess there's an outhouse over there. And so on and so forth. What's down here? I remember in the trailer that there was like a guy somewhere that's like following you. I don't want to ruin that, but like... Who knows? There's some propane over there. I sell propane and propane accessories. Oh, whoa. Why is this all boarded up? 
What am I doing? How? What? Yeah, no, I see the lookout tower, but how do I get in there? Oh, wow! I'm an idiot. I went all the way around. Turn on the power. Oh, hey, there's a radio! Perfect, and that's that's what I needed. Um, okay, so... Floor of the Shoshone poster. Oh, there's a generator. Turns everything on. So this is my new life. Um, left shift. Left shift. There you go. Oh. Hello? Um. Okay. Okay. Hello? That's interesting. It's Henry, right? Yeah. Cook I'm Delilah. Hey, Delilah. What the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? Hmm. People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. <laughs> you take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I like, sleep forever? <laughs> That's sure, cool. Buddy. Uh, okay, no, go ahead. okay, I will go ahead and reply. Alright, um, you've killed three ex-husbands, you're rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. I think that's a little bit more re realistic. Okay, you're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ooh. Ouch. Uh, I'll chalk that up to being <laughs> tired and grumpy. Sorry. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. Oh, okay. Fine. Good night. Bye. Okay, See, good night. Bye. <laughs> Ooh. A tree finish. No. Good night. Good night. Good night. Welcome to the job. All right. And that's Firewatch. Yes. Perfect. Day one. Um, I know that this is kind of a short introduction. All right. So I've got seven minutes left, and I'll go ahead and keep playing for right now. Um, I may not finish through day one, but we'll go ahead and see. really neat. I mean, the whole idea of, yeah, you do this to run away from something. Good morning, Henry. Yeah. Oh, is that? I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Oh. Okay. Um. Photo with Julia. Okay, can I? I can't get up. Whatever. Pick up radio. Left ship, shift. I need to stop saying that. <laughs> hey, Sorry, I guess I slept in. Guess I slept in. You got a relaxing what? Fourteen hours of sleep? Ooh. Yeah, Jesus. I guess it's what six. Six forty-five. Wow. <laughs> Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. That makes but sense. You're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Mm, yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914. Interesting. WB Osborne. <laughs> you guessed it. Fi what the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um you uh you use this to oh, fuck me. Good God. What's up? Gosh, lady. Out your west facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Where? Are those fucking fireworks? <gasps> I see him. What the fuck? Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no, it's not. No. You need cause to get a down fire right now and stop them. Fire dangerous through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your uh. job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Alrighty, I will. Kick the shit out of them. Um, can I write them a ticket? Can I write them a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. Oh, on the, the way. Is one, two, three, four. It's 
actually bad for all of them. So it's real easy. <laughs> Convenient. That's one word for it. I mean, I wouldn't blame them, like, you know, if you have such a simple code as that. I mean, if anybody would need to use that rope in, um... An emergency that would make sense okay so where am I supposed to be going again um which way was it this way this way oh god I don't know where I am um zoom in two forts lookout where was I needing to go oh god so let me actually ask her again see if I can Jonesy Lake. I guess I'll go towards the lake. And let's see, where am I? Okay, so to the west. West, west. West. This way. So yeah, no, I was going the right way. Out to the west. Guys, I don't care if you're around a lake. I wonder, I can't seem to run at all. Nope. There's no running action. Huh. Climbing over. But yeah, um, like I was saying before, um, that's a really interesting concept of running away from yourself. Whenever you take these types of jobs, you literally have to have, like, no life. Nothing built up, nothing, um that you were responsible for, and that, I mean, that's basically what happened to him. I used to know a guy who was kind of like that. Uh, supply crate. Open. Oh! Oh, okay. One, two, three, no, three, four, and done. There we go! Map copy information. Oh, that's so neat! My map is updated. Take the note. What does this say? Um, examine. Oh, that's so different. Ron, hey man, guy couldn't take it, so I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked. Hiking in the park, but let's get fucked when I'm back, Dave. Okay. Wow! Old rope! Dealing with whoever is setting off fireworks. Are we gonna tie him up? Maybe. Granola bar. Hey, I thought... Hey, snack! Hey, there's a snack in here. Probably gonna eat it. Where's that? I'm at the cash box. Can I eat it? Nom, 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 nom. I don't know if that'll help me or hurt me. Where's my map? Okay, there we go. And west was, yes, continuously this way. I don't know, I guess we'll tie him up. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do. R, oh, to, R to toggle jogging. I am pressing R. Oh, okay. So, continuously that way. I understand now. There we go. Now I can run. Alright, that makes total sense. Um, going around the way. Going around the way. Going around the way. Hey, you kids. What are you doing out here? I don't know where they are. Over yonder. Oh, okay, so this is where I get to attach the rope. Um, shale slide, it's steep. Oh, well. I am doing it anyways. Space bar to rapple. Wow, this is cool. Okay, so I just continuously... Oh, okay. But I can't look around me and I can't look behind me, so if anything gets to me... Oh, whoa, no! Oh, are you okay, Henry? Oh, jeez. 
Well, that was kind of rough. Oh, well, you're a rough guy, right? Oh, ow. Hey. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. Oh, no. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. <laughs> Old climbing gear. So, um, let me figure this out. West is that way. So I don't know if I need to go actually down there just yet. But it was this way, right? Report Meadow. I'm not sure where to look. Staring at the big outcropping down here, but I'm not quite sure where to look for our uh, pyrotechnicians. Mm. Maybe keep heading west toward the lake. All right, we'll do. What's all this? Beer cans? Guys. Oh, but I can clean it up. Neat. Guys, okay. You know what um you know what them environmentalists say? Shouldn't be doing this. Backpacks. They left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. <sighs> so clean that up. I'm cleaning these fireworks up. Confiscate. Ah, oh, your clothes. What you doing, guys? Oh, there's a bra. It's getting kinky. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Where am I going? Down this way. Hi guys. Found them in the lake, naked. Skinny dipping. Yeah. And they're drunk. Oh, guys. No stereo. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you. Yeah, well, fuck you too. Yeah, fuck you too. Good lord. Oh, I don't wanna... There we go. Eh. <laughs> it's done. Well, that's ominous. Hopefully there won't be any more trouble. Basically. Thanks for going down there. No problemo, little lady. Alright, let's see if we can find a way back home. Alright, so I will actually end up um, stopping right here. So far, so good. Really, Overwatch is... Or Firewatch, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not Overwatch, that's a different game. Firewatch is actually very, very interesting. Um, if you guys have the chance to play this, please do so play it yourself. This is absolutely beautiful. I am in awe of just the surrounding itself. Um, the whole interaction, the whole interface, the uh, walkie-talkie, the fact that you have somebody to talk to, um, it's totally different than most survival games. I don't know necessarily if this is a survival game, um, but it's hella fun. So, um, if you liked my video, go ahead and like, subscribe, give me comments in the comment section down below, and we'll continue this next time. Peace!